Welcome back. In this video, I am going to be talking about the block sphere. In my previous videos, I've discussed how to measure quantum spin along the x, y, and z directions, but I haven't talked about how to measure it along any arbitrary uh, direction in space. That's going to change in this video. So basically, what we're going to discuss is a correspondence between quantum states, which are v vectors in C2, and unit vectors just in regular space, so n hat, which is a vector in R3. Basically, what we're going to see is that uh, a quantum spin state, which you might have trouble picturing, can in some ways just be thought of as a regular vector pointing somewhere in three-dimensional space. And the idea is that if you were to measure uh, this quantum state along the axis spanned by n hat, this quantum spin state would always be spin up in that axis. So 100% of the time you measure in this axis, it's going to be spin up. Um, that's what this correspondence is going to give, it's going to give to us. So before I get to that, I just want to spell out some common um, notation, which you might have seen before. So here I have the x, y, and z axes. And I'm going to draw n hat, which is a unit vector. So it has length 1. And let's say that the angle between n hat and the z axis is theta. Furthermore, if you project down uh, n hat onto the x, y plane, project it down to this sort of shadow right here, the angle between this shadow of n hat and the x axis is an angle which I will call phi. So now I want to write n sub x, n sub y, and n sub z in terms of theta and phi. So let's do that. Uh, first things first, if you kind of draw this, actually, I can do a little better than that. If you draw this, uh, yeah, if you draw this right triangle here, you can see that this length right here is just cosine of theta. So n sub z is just cosine of theta. That's the easiest one. Next, the length of this shadow right here, of the, this, the vector of this shadow, is sine theta. Right? That's the length of this vector. So if you draw this right triangle, you can see that this length right here is just sine theta times cosine of phi. So n sub x is sine theta times cosine of phi. Finally, this right triangle here uh, lets us see that this length right here is just sine theta times sine of phi. So sine theta times sine of phi. So these three equations are very important. They allow us to write n hat uh, in terms of two angles, theta and phi. And we're going to be using this extensively throughout the video. So I just thought I would say that first. All right. Now let me clear the screen a little. All right. Now I'm going to spell out what the correspondence is right up front. So, if you have a vector n hat, you can get the quantum state, which is always pointing in the n hat direction, as follows. So, I'm going to label this the spin up in the n direction, right? That's just my name for the state. And that is going to be the state with components cosine of theta over 2 in the top 
and e to the i phi times sine of theta over 2 in the bottom. Um, yeah, I got that right. <laughs> okay, now if you have some quantum state psi, you can get n hat as follows. Actually, okay, yeah, I'll write it here. So n hat equals, in the first component, we have the expectation value of psi and, whoops, and sigma sub x, which is the poly matrix, the first poly matrix. Then we have in the y for the y component the expectation value of psi and sigma sub y. And for the z component, we have the expectation value of y, sorry, of psi and sigma sub z. Now, there's something interesting to note here. Um, obviously psi and e to the i alpha times psi, where alpha is just any real number, these two states have no observable differences, as I discussed briefly in my first uh, video. So you can sort of see that if, so I might as well just say that this thing out front here is what you might call a phase, and it is unobservable. These two states, there's no measurement that you could perform that could distinguish between these two states. And thankfully, um, psi and e to the i alpha times psi have the same exact n hat. Now you might be saying, well, how do I know which state really is uh, pointing up in the n direction, right? Like, couldn't I just multiply this by e to the i alpha, right? Couldn't I just say that state uh, is also, you know, pointing up at the end? And the question is, yeah, actually, there is just sort of a uh, convention that has to be fixed. And the convention which we have chosen here is just the one where the first component is real. So as you can see, the first component has no imaginary part, while the second component will in general have an imaginary part. So that's just worth mentioning. Now it's worth mentioning two pieces of terminology uh, quickly. N hat here, is what you would call the block vector. Uh, block, by the way, is just named after some guy named Felix Block. So yeah, so n hat is the block vector. And what's the block sphere? Well, it's not really anything too crazy. It's just that because n hat uh, has norm one, all of the block vectors live on the block sphere, which is just a sphere, uh, you know, the sphere defined by nx squared plus ny squared plus nz squared equals 1. So this is the block sphere. All right, so now that I've introduced this correspondence, it's time to take a more principled approach so I can really convince you that this correspondence is legit. <laughs> so now I'm going to talk about performing measurements along any axis. So I'll just start off by reminding you what all the poly matrices are. So sigma sub x is 0, 1, 1, 0. Sigma sub y is 0, negative i, i, 0. And sigma sub z is 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Now in a piece of funny notation, which we'll find helpful throughout the video, this sigma with, an er with a vector arrow on top should be thought of as a vector of matrices. <laughs> and you might be thinking like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And it's not, you shouldn't really take it too seriously. It just sort of makes for some clean notation. You, you shouldn't let it bother you, like what a vector of matrices really means. So for instance, here's an example of some useful notation. Okay, n hat dot the sigma vector. Now what does this mean? Well, it's just the dot product in the way you learned it. So 
it's just n sub x times sigma sub x plus n sub y times sigma sub y plus n sub z times sigma sub z. And this is just the two by two matrix with components n sub z, n sub x minus i times n sub y, n sub x plus i times n sub y, and negative n sub z. So n hat dot the sigma vector really is just a two by two matrix and it's really just clever notation. Um, don't worry about it. All right, now let me uh, clear the screen a bit. Oops. Okay, very good. All right, now let me ask you the main question. So question. What is the state that will always be measured to be spin up in, in the n hat direction? Now let's think about how we can uh, address this question. So if you think about last video, uh, we learned that, for instance, the state, the up state in the x direction is an eigenvector of sigma sub x with an eigenvalue of plus one. Right, so here we have the eigenvalue of plus one. And likewise, the spin down state in the x direction is an eigenvector of sigma sub x with an eigenvalue of minus one, right? Oh, and maybe I should just write what these are, uh, just in case you forgot. Uh, okay. So we also saw this to be the case uh, in the y direction, the z direction, that the spin up state always is an eigenvector with eigenvalue of plus one, and the spin down state is always an eigenvector with an eigenvalue of minus one. So it would be reasonable to conclude, and in fact it's correct because I'm telling this to you, that the matrix n hat dot the sigma vector, right? This is a two by two matrix. The eigenvector of this matrix with eigenvalue one is the spin up state in the n hat direction. So actually, let me write that here. So answer the state which is an eigenvector of n hat dot the sigma vector with eigenvalue plus one. All right, now we're gonna find what that eigenvector is and hint, hint, it's going to be the vector I wrote earlier. So, as I wrote before, n hat times the sigma vector has entries n sub z, n sub x minus i times m sub y, n sub x plus i times n sub y, and minus n sub z, where n sub x equals sine of theta times cosine of phi, n sub y equals sine of theta times sine of phi, and n sub z equals cosine of theta. So, just as a warm up, note that n sub x plus i times n sub y is equal to sine of theta times in parentheses, 
cosine of phi plus i times sine of phi, which is just equal to sine of theta, whoops, which is just equal to e to the i phi times sine of theta. So this means that n hat dotted with the sigma vector just has entries cosine of theta e to the negative i phi sine of theta e to the i phi times sine of theta and negative cosine of theta. All right, let me now erase all of my scratch work. All right, let me bring this up here and then kind of, oops, bring this to the side a bit. Oh, I guess I should actually. Okay, great. So, let's now check to see if what I call the spin-up state in the n direction, which was the vector with components of cosine of theta over 2 and e to the i phi times sine of theta over 2, Right, this was what I had called the spin-up state in the direction. But now we're going to check <laughs> to make sure that this was really a fair thing for me to call it. So now we're going to multiply this matrix by this vector and do it in your head with me uh, while I write it out. I sort of have to be silent so I get it right. But you should do it in your head. It's really not so hard. good practice if you're new to this. All right, so uh, this simplifies a bit. Of course, this and this cancel out. And this and this can be brought out front. So here we have cosine of theta, cosine of theta over 2, uh, plus sine of theta, sine of theta over 2. And here we have e to the i phi. And here we have parentheses sine of theta, cosine of theta over 2, minus cosine of theta times sine of theta over 2. All right, now uh, once again, I'm just sort of going to kind of delete the scratch work as I go along. All right, let's bring that up there. Okay, now something kind of nice happens. Um, you may recall that cosine of alpha minus beta is equal to cosine of alpha times cosine of beta plus sine of alpha times sine of beta, right? So that means that this top component is just cosine of theta minus theta over 2. And likewise, sine of alpha minus beta is just equal to sine of alpha times cosine of beta minus sine of beta times cosine of alpha. So this bottom component is sine of theta minus theta over 2. So, we can kind of get rid of that there and then write this is equal to 
cosine of theta over 2 and then e to the i phi times sine of theta over 2. But oh wait, <laughs> that's just equal to the spin-up state in the n direction, right? Was, well, our hypothesized spin-up state in the n direction. But more importantly, it's equal to plus 1 <laughs> times the spin-up state in the n direction. So, yay, we have just showed that, yes, this, real, this state really is the eigenvector of n hat dot the sigma vector with an eigenvalue of 1, which is what we've been wanting to show uh, for a while now. So you might wonder something else, which is what is the spin down state with respect to the n hat direction? So I'll just tell you what that is. Uh, let's delete this. OK, so I'll just write again that the spin up state has components of cosine of theta over 2 and e to the i phi times sine of theta over 2. And the spin down state in the n direction has components of sine of theta over 2 and negative e to the i phi cosine of theta over 2. Now these two states satisfy, thankfully, all the relations uh, you would think they should. So, for instance, the inner product of the spin up state with itself is 1. The inner product of the spin down state with itself is also 1. And importantly, the inner product of the spin up state with the spin down state is 0. And I guess I should just write out that n hat dot the sigma vector when acting on the spin up state is plus 1 times the spin up state and n hat dot the sigma vector acting on the spin down state is negative 1 times the spin down state. So all of these together, for instance, implies that n hat dot the sigma vector equals the ket of the spin up state with the outer product of the bra with the spin up state minus the ket of the spin down state times the bra of the spin down state. And you could actually. Uh, check this equation for yourself by doing out the matrix multiplication. You'll find that it is indeed satisfied, uh, just as you would hope it would be. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to conduct a few sanity checks, um, just so we can see that you know everything is really working as it should be working. So just so keep these two states up on the screen. So sanity checks. So I'm also going to very quickly just redraw my coordinate system again. So here you have the x, y, and z axes. Here I have the n hat vector. This angle is theta. This angle is phi. We have n sub x equals sine of theta times cosine of phi. n sub y equals sine of theta times sine of phi. And n sub z equals cosine of theta. So the first sanity check I want to conduct is just to see that when n hat points along the x-axis, y-axis, or z-axis, uh, these two states are just the same old spin up and down states we've already encountered before. So if n hat points along the x axis, then we have theta equals pi over 2 and phi equals 0. 
and then the spin up state has components of cosine of pi over 4 and e to the i times 0 times sine of pi over 4 and this is just equal to 1 over root 2 and 1 over root 2 which is the spin up state in the x direction that we've already seen before so that works now I'm going to check the spin down state this has components of sine of pi over 4 and negative e to the i times 0 times cosine of pi over 4 which is just 1 over root 2 and negative 1 over root 2 which is just the spin down state in the x direction which is also what we've seen before okay good now um, we're going to do it in the y direction so n is components 0 1 and 0 theta is once again pi over 2 but now phi is pi over 2 instead of 0 and the spin up state has components of cosine of pi over 4 and e to the i pi over 2 times sine of pi over 4 which is just equal to 1 over root 2 and i over root 2 which is the spin up state in the y direction that we've seen before okay good <laughs> now the spin down state has components of sine of pi over 4 and negative e to the i pi over 2 times cosine of pi over 4 which is 1 over root 2 and negative i over root 2 which is the spin down state in the y direction as we've seen before okay good so so far oops so far uh, all of our sanity checks are going great all right finally what happens if n is in the z direction something kind of funny happens here but um so here theta is zero but notice that when n hat uh points along the z-axis phi uh, can be anything so we don't even have to say what phi is this is a quirk of uh, this particular coordinate system so I mean it's just sort of what happens with spherical coordinates in general but okay the up state has components of cosine of zero and e to the i phi times sine of 0 which is just 1 and 0 which is the up state in the z direction which is great but the spin down state has components sine of 0 and negative e to the i phi times cosine of 0 which is just 0 and negative e to the i phi which is equal to negative e to the i phi times the spin down state in the z component. Now, this looks a bit funny, but without a doubt, this factor out front is just an overall phase. So this state right here is observably the same as the spin down state in the z direction. So even in this case, yes, it works. Okay, so that was the first sandy check I wanted to do. Now I want to do another one, which should hopefully be a bit more interesting. So the thing I'm going to check now is that the spin up state in the negative n direction is equal to the spin down state in the n direction. That's what I'm going to now show. So first things first, how do our angles phi and theta have to change in order to negate n hat? So maybe you can see it by looking at that picture over there. But if we send phi to phi plus pi and theta to pi minus theta, then 
cosine of phi will change to cosine of phi plus pi, and then using the cosine addition formula, you can see that this is negative cosine of phi. Sine of phi will change to sine of phi plus pi, which you can use the sine addition formula, or maybe a clever diagram to show that that's negative sine of phi. Cosine of theta changes to cosine of pi minus theta, which is equal to negative cosine of theta, and whoops, and sine of theta changes to sine of pi minus theta, which is actually not negated unlike the other three, and it's just sine of theta. So okay, under this change right here, we can see that sine of theta doesn't change, right? Cosine of theta picks up a minus sign, so n sub x is sent to negative n sub x, then sine of theta doesn't change, and sine of phi picks up a negative sign, so n sub y is negated, and then n sub z, well, because cosine of theta picks up a minus sign, is sent to negative n sub z. So, we can see that, yeah, uh, as promised, this sends n hat to negative n hat. So now, clearing our scratch work a bit, um, we can now write that the spin up state in the negative n direction has components of cosine of pi over 2 minus theta over 2 and e to the i phi plus pi times sine of pi over 2 minus theta over 2. So, well, the first thing to notice is that uh, this is just e to the i phi times e to the i pi, which is just equal to negative e to the i phi. The second thing to notice is that, um, I guess I'll write it here, cosine of pi over 2 minus theta over 2 is just equal to sine of, whoops, sine of theta over 2. And likewise, sine of pi over 2 minus theta over 2 is just equal to cosine of theta over 2. And actually, a pretty easy way to see that is just to sort of draw this right triangle with an angle of theta over 2 and pi minus, whoops, oh yeah, no, oh, I had it right, and pi over 2 minus theta over 2. So here we can see that, for instance, uh, cosine of theta over 2 equals sine of pi over 2 minus theta over 2. Oh, something to keep in mind, I guess. Um, anyway, whoops, I'm rushing a bit. <laughs> anyway, um, this means that this whole thing is just equal to sine of theta over 2 in the top and negative e to the i phi times cosine of theta over 2 in the bottom. But oh wait, that is just the spin down state in the n direction, which is exactly what I wanted to show. And, you know, hopefully this equation, you know, makes a lot of sense to you. If it's pointing up in the n direction, it should be pointing down in the negative n direction. <laughs> okay, so now we are done with all of the sanity checks. The next thing I want to do is make a small point, which is that all states psi are equal to the spin up state in the n direction for some direction n hat. So 
any state has two components, alpha and beta, where alpha and beta are complex numbers. And we can always choose a, a, a real number gamma, right? Such that e to the i gamma times alpha and e to the i gamma times beta satisfies that the imaginary part of e to the i gamma times alpha is zero, right? So here we're just multiplying our state by an overall phase e to the i gamma such that the imaginary part of the top component is zero. Then we can say that this is equal to, oh, let's say alpha prime and e to the i phi times beta prime, where alpha prime and beta prime are purely real, right? So here all we did is, well, this is a real number because we just made it a real number. And here we chose a phi exactly so that uh, what was previously e to the i gamma times beta is now e to the i phi times beta prime, where beta prime is real. So because the inner product of phi with itself is one, this implies that alpha prime squared plus beta prime squared is equal to one. And all such alpha primes and beta primes live on the unit circle and can be parameterized by an angle. And here we should call the angle, you know, theta over two and, you know, have alpha prime equal to cosine of theta over two and have beta prime equal to sine of theta over two. So yeah, so my only point is that every state is the spin-up state in some direction, no matter what. And that is just because, as we have just shown, you can write any state psi as an overall phase e to the negative i gamma times cosine of theta over two and e to the i phi times sine of theta over two, which is just our expression for the spin-up state in the n direction. All right, that was the small point I wanted to make. Now I want to move on to something else, which is the expression for the block vector n hat. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there's this expression for the components of n hat which is as the expectation value of your state with sigma sub x, sigma sub y, and sigma sub z. There's a really cute way to write this, um, which I like a lot, which is like this. I think that's a nice little expression. And uh, I think this equation here is, one, is, is a good one to keep in your head. Uh, uh, I think more people should know about uh, this equation. There have been some times when it's been useful to like think in terms of this equation. I don't know, I, I think it's good. Um, I'm just gonna write one more time what my state is uh, what my in terms of uh, theta and phi. Just gonna put it in the corner there. And in this part of the video, I'm just gonna prove this equation, all right? Pretty simple goal. Now. Let's start with the x component. So I'm going to write the dual vector here. And to do that, I got a complex conjugate the components, right? So I got to complex conjugate that. And that's sigma sub x. And okay, there's my state. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is multiply 
this vector by this matrix, and that simply has the effect of switching the components. Then I am going to multiply the dual vector by the vector. All right. And then just tidy this up a bit. Okay, so you may or may not know that this right here can be written as 2 times cosine of phi. Um, so here we have 2 times cosine of phi times cosine of theta over 2 times sine of theta over 2. Now this right here is 1 half of sine of uh, theta, just from the sine addition formula. So this whole thing is just cosine of phi times sine of theta, which is just exactly our expression for n sub x. Excellent. All right. Now I'm pretty well. <laughs> All right. Now I'm just going to kind of leave this intact and do the same thing. Oh, sorry, I should make that a Y. All right, so once again, um, I'm going to start by multiplying the matrix by the vector on the right. So that is just, let's see, negative I times E to the I phi times sine of theta over 2 and i times cosine of theta over 2, and then multiplying the dual vector by the vector, you get cosine of theta over 2 times negative i times e to the i phi times sine of theta over 2 plus e to the negative i phi times sine of theta over 2 times i times cosine of theta over 2 equals i times e to the negative, or I guess I mean hmm, negative e to the i phi plus e to the negative i phi times sine of theta over 2 times cosine of theta over 2. And now uh, sometimes when you're confronted by stuff like this, you just really got to figure it out from scratch. So here we have cosine of phi minus i times sine of phi, that's just that term right there, plus cosine of phi minus i times sine of phi, right? That's just, you know, because sine of negative phi equals negative uh, sine of phi. Anyway, uh, so, okay, yeah, so the two cosines, oops, so the two cosines cancel out, and this is equal to i times negative 2i times sine of phi, which is just equal to 2 times sine of phi. Okay, very exciting. So, right, so that's, sorry, so this is equal to 2 times sine of phi, and then we know that this is just 1 half times sine of theta, so this whole thing is sine of phi times sine of theta, and up, that's just n sub y. So, all right, good, good, good. Got it to work. <laughs> so now we just got to do n sub z, which is always the easiest one. Uh, all right. 
So sigma sub z, and then we have 1, 0, 0, negative 1. All right. All right, so this matrix is very easy to multiply. Um, we just multiply 1 times the top component and minus 1 times the bottom component. And then here we just have cosine squared of theta over 2 minus sine squared of theta over 2. Then using the cosine addition formula, this right here is just cosine of theta. Oh, that was pretty easy, just n sub z. All right, so we've now proven that nice little expression uh, for the block vector. <laughs> One of the fun things about the expression we just showed, I'll just say while we're talking about it, is that there are some fun uh, manipulations you can do with it. So, so when we have that n hat is the expectation value of psi with the sigma vector, then you can see, for example, that n hat dot n hat is n hat dot, and then we're going to use the expression right here, and then sort of bringing in the n hat in, into the uh, expectation value. Right, we already know that this right here is just psi because psi is an eigenvector with eigenvalue one. So, oh look, that's just equal to one. So n must uh, be a unit vector as we already knew. I don't know, I just think manipulations like this are kind of fun. So I just thought I would show that to you. There was other stuff like that too. I think. <laughs> All right, there's one last thing I want to talk about, which is just, I think, sort of a, a good expression to keep in your head. This is just an expression for probabilities. So I think kind of useful in terms of how you think about stuff. Okay, so let's just start off by computing the inner product of the spin-up state in the z direction and the n direction. So here just have the dual vector of the spin-up state in the z direction and the spin-up state in the n direction. And this is just equal to cosine of theta over 2. That means that the probability of measuring spin up in the z-axis if your state is uh, the spin-up state in the n direction is the absolute value squared of the inner product of the spin-up state in the z direction and the n direction, which is just cosine of theta over 2 squared, right? which can also be rewritten as 1 half of 1 plus cosine of theta. So what this looks like is if here we have theta, here we have 0, pi over 2, and pi. This starts at 1, and then goes down to 0, and is 1 half when theta equals pi over 2. Okay, so the unit vector pointing along the z-axis is usually called k hat, and if we draw n hat here, the angle between k hat and n hat is theta. And furthermore, the dot product of, sorry, <laughs> the dot product of k hat and n hat is cosine of theta. So we can sort of see immediately how to generalize this formula. Um, and it is that the inner product, let's say the spin-up state in the m direction, that's just some other unit vector, and the n direction, that's just going to be 1 half times 1 plus n hat dot m hat, right? Here, see, I just replaced cosine of theta with n hat dot m hat because I know that in the case we computed, we computed previously, 
cosine of theta was just the dot product of those uh, two unit vectors. So this equation right here is, I think, a useful one to keep in your head. Notice that it's equal to uh, 1 if n hat dot m hat is equal to 1. It's 1 half if n hat dot m hat is equal to 0. And it's 0 if n hat dot m hat is equal to minus 1. So this formula right here, uh, I, think, I think it's good to keep in mind because it's kind of easy to remember how the measurements work and stuff like that. So now that the video is mostly over, I actually have a confession to make. Um, this video is actually only partially about the block sphere. What I also wanted to convey is how when you're given a correspondence, you should check for yourself whether everything you've been told makes sense. And this involves doing some simple sanity checks and becoming comfortable with all the different formulas you've been given, and just in general, having a gung-ho mentality about checking simple things. So I hope that in this video, in the way I posed questions and then tried to find the answers, you learned something about how to approach equations and gain an intuition for them. And never forget that physics rewards hard workers. And if you keep that in mind, you'll never fail. <laughs> All right, that concludes my video on the block sphere. Thank you for watching. In my next video, I'm going to discuss how quantum spin states evolve in time in the presence of a magnetic field.